Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial by G Production. <clears throat> In this tutorial I want to teach you a simple but very useful script not only in 3D Studio Max this script you can use it in every graphic program 2D or 3D you can use it in After Effects or whatever you want <clears throat> and the idea behind this uh, script that I want to teach you I learned it from I saw it from uh, School of Motion and there I found a tutorial it named the name was rolling and rigging a cube in After Effects I saw this tutorial it was a very good one but unfortunately uh, when it comes to scripting this young guy couldn't fix the problem of this rigging and this rotating on the edge with the mathematical expressions you know I got clones can be amazing how much taller this cube is getting and and you know I got close with it but maybe I'm not good enough at trigonometry and I'm sure that there's a way to do it with cosines and sines and tangents and all that and as you heard right now he wanted to solve this problem in an mathematical equation but he couldn't fix it instead he used some internal function in After Effects this code that he is teaching is very useful and good but you can only use it in After Effects so that was a, a small challenge for me to find a way to fix this problem in a proper way and to give this code to all of you so you can use it as you can see it is very useful and you can achieve very beautiful effects when you can see here our cubes are rolling on the ground so that is what I want to teach you today so let's jump into after uh, 3d studio max and begin our lesson I create a box in the top view after I create it after I did it I bring it to the zero zero position make sure that the rotation is zero and <coughs> right now for our length I want to give a one <coughs> sorry after that because it's easier to understand after that you can change you can have any value that you want but for the length it should be so thick and that's enough for right now okay that is our box and this box we bring the center of the pivot to the center of the object and after that we go to reset X form reset it right click and convert to poly so the problem is this the first step is that as uh, the problem is this imagine this is a ground and when the cube is rolling it should hit the edges okay but the problem is that right now our pivot is in the center so if I try to rotate it you can see that it goes to the ground it means it should go up at the same time but this uh, equation it's not a linear equation why because when from the 0 to uh, sorry 0 to 5 10 degree we have that amount <coughs> of uh, rotation that is that should be up but when we are for example here to the next one that is much less it means the value of this uh, y position that should be go up and down it's uh, not a linear equation and this is not a y I change this view to y this is our z position because we are z up in 3d studio max in other programs you are y up it's the same 
but uh, right now we are working with x z and the y in depth so the first challenge is that you write some code that if i try to rotate my box in the y-axis it goes up and down it goes up and down shoot so it always stay on the ground that was a problem the another thing that <coughs> we should know is that the maximum amount of getting up and down is at 45 degree and when we are in the zero degree we are to we need no extra amount to, uh, <coughs> for bringing this uh, our cube up so this is the challenge that we are facing right now and we want to try to write some code to uh, fix this problem therefore right click on the object curve editor in the curve editor uh, we <coughs> will write some code for the z position so the z position should be dependent on the rotation of, of the y rotation right click assign control and what we want to need is a float script so this z position should be assigned on the y rotation therefore i create here a variable and name it y rotation create it and assign it to the track objects box one and y rotation so right now y rotation is assigned target to box one rotation control y rotation so first thing we should create a variable and the first variable is the cube length the cube length in this case is one we say 1.0 so it should we say that it's a float the next thing is to get the diameter imagine that we have a rectangle um, uh, that the triangular here in the triangle we have a three sides a b and c and as you know the c is always the biggest one as it means the, the largest one okay so we want to know how much this c is why we need this because when we try to rotate it we should know how much when we are at the 45 degree at the highest uh, amount of uh, bringing this cube up we want to know how much this cube should go up so therefore we need first this uh, length so how we get this create a um, variable and name it diameter assign to and it's very easy we say um, very easy we say cube length power 2 plus uh, cube length power 2 and all of these square root square root of all of these we can also say power to 0 0.5 it's the same so we say we have right now here our cube length cube length and then cube length power 2 okay plus cube length power 2 and all of these power 0 0.5 so that is the first step after getting our diameter we should know how much is this extra length that we have here because we have our uh, edge here and we know for example that this edge is one but we want to know how much uh, it, in other words uh, how much is this uh, uh, tilt uh, as the C length larger than other two so therefore I create another variable and name it extra length and this extra length is equal to diameter that we have here right now diameter minus cube length 
and this divide by two because just the half of it. Right now we know that if we are in 45 degree, how much this uh, our z position should go up, and this is the amount of our extra length. In other words, when we are on the zero degree, it's the extra length as well, we need no extra length and depend on some equation if we uh, try as well, if we go up to the 45 degree we need some of this extra length and if we are at the 45 degree we need the full of this extra length and after that it should be once again less so the next step is uh, to know how much is our current rotation okay so we say current rotation that it's a variable name and equal to sile that means if we have a, a number of 2.8 it give you a 3 okay sile of abs give the, this abs is a function that gives you the absolute number of y rotation and where have we this y rotation here okay y road so right now we have our y road this absolute give you always the absolute number of rotation no matter if it's 45 or minus 45 it give you 45 okay and so right now we have our current rotation after this what we what we need is to know in which quarter we are but right now first i say i let it to the side and go to the next one i say okay the current rotation is equal to mode current rotation 45 multiply 2 what that means is for us no matter how uh, how much our um, current rotation is we just want to know uh, when you divide our current rotation to 50, 50, uh, 45 how much remainder we have so no matter if the rotation amount is 3000 or 100 or 200 we want to know in which part of this uh, uh, amount we are we are finding ourselves right now so therefore we are using this mode function that gives us the reminder but why multiply 2 very easily because we want to use the sine and cosine function and in uh, sine and cosine function we have the value from 0 to 90 but here our maximal maximum value is 45 so we should always multiply it by 2 so we have the same value so we after that we can use the sine and cosine so I click enter and go to the next uh, to the next step so right now we need to define our z position okay the z position is equal to cube length divide by 2 divide by 2 plus and here is where everything starts the sign of current rotation the sign of current rotation multiplied by extra length extra length what that means we we know that uh, how much are, are we know the amount of our uh, um, cube length and if we are in the zero degree we need no extra length so the sign of zero uh, the amount of sine zero is zero therefore uh, there will be zero multiplied by extra length no matter how much is extra length is 
we have only the half of, of our cube length for our y uh, uh, zero uh, position but if we go up to the 45 degree it will change okay and then we will plus this amount to our cube length divide by 2 and we get our z position and we will return the z position so let's evaluate and see what we have right now i try to rotate it and you can see that it's working properly but if i go to the 45 degree oops there is going something wrong 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 and until i am the 90 once again it's everything okay and wrong so in other words what we can say about this is this we have four quarter here okay one two three and four in this quarter and in this quarter everything is working properly but in these two not why because if we are in these two uh, quarter it shouldn't be a sign it should be a cosine so how to fix this problem very easily after getting our current rotation here okay we create a new variable and say current quarter okay and this current quarter we want to know in which of these four we are right now it's equal to floor and the floor of current rotation divide by 45 so why we say flow because for example no matter how much our current rotation is if I divide it by 45 and the result is 1.5 1.2 or 1.9 we know that we are in the one uh, the first uh, quarter if it's the 2.3 or 2.9 we know that we are here so we are going go to the floor and if it's 1.5 give give us a 1 if it's 2.5 give us a 2 therefore we use the floor function after so we have right now 1 2 3 and 4 okay this value so but uh, the next thing is to know because we need uh, that's not enough for not that's not enough information we can say uh, create an if and say if it the current the current quarter is one or or three do this and if it's two or four do the other but that's not the right way so the right way is to say current quarter is equal to mode current rotation uh, sorry current quarter two that means in other words we say we 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 have right now a zero or a one because if it's one the reminder is one if it's two the reminder is zero if it's three the reminder is one if it's four the reminder is zero so we will have one zero one zero in our current uh, quarter after we did this uh, here we say an if if current quarter okay is equal to zero then do this else do something else and we copy this bring this here tap always tap and tap here and here we say cosine so i hope everything is okay so right now you can see that it's working probably and it's staying always at the ground so the next thing is to move it okay for this reason we create a helper i go here to create and i create a point i use always some points 
and this point should be at the center and go here we can rename it to uh, helper uh, position X okay and we go back to our cube and right click curve editor and in our uh, Y rotation the rotation our rotation should be dependent on the position of the Z position or of our helper so therefore we should write some code for our Y rotation assign controller and float script once again but this time it will be some easy code first we say helper um, position X create a variable and assign it to our track and our track is uh, open transform position X okay so right now we say Y rotation is equal to deck to rod uh, deck to rod helper position x multiplied by 36 divide by divide by perimeter of our cube the perimeter of a cube you can calculate it uh, in in the way that you say 4 multiply the length of one side of the cube so 4 multiply 1 because our length is right now 1 you can right now say this ok when we are finished right now so why I use deck to rod it means degree to radian because when we get this information of our rotation it is in uh, degree but the computer understand only radian so after when we want to give this back to the computer we should give it as radian so we convert it to radian multiply it by 36 and uh, divide it to 4 uh, two parameter of our cube so evaluate so right now after this you should link your object to your helper so now I try to move it voila as you can see it's rotating on the ground very very beautiful the next thing is if you want to do some offset and you want to say okay at the point zero 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 I want to have some rotation so easily you can say take to rod whatever our, your uh, rotation is plus 45 or whatever and you will have some offset here that is the way that you create can create some offset here and voila as you can see you just need to select your helper moving pattern moving back and forth and you have your animation you can use this code but in all programs all 2 and 3d programs to achieve the same effect of course you need to know the uh, syntax of uh, that uh, program for example in after effect the the if statements are some somehow else or something else but here that is the way that i did it in 3d studio max and our my end result that you saw here it's the same i did it here with three cubes and some animation and we, I have here also some bend and flex to have it I'm sorry have some more effective and beautiful effect so as I said it's a simple script but very useful I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something if you liked it uh, don't forget to subscribe at G projection if you have any ideas or any uh, project in your mind that I can help somehow, I will be there for you. Will be happy if I uh, have some feedback about these scripts and other stuff of mine. So I wish you luck. 
and uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Bye.